Hi everyone, my name's Tim Mobbs. I'm Head of Networks here at Teach First and I've got the absolute pleasure this afternoon of in, in, introducing the next inspirational ambassador story, um, which is Tom Seddon, who is a 27 ambassador. I've had the pleasure of knowing Tom um, since 2018 when I was his development lead in school. Um, so I'll, I'll pass over to Tom to introduce himself. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Tom Seddon. Uh, I'm at 2017 Teach First Ambassador. Uh, so I taught in Bradford, uh, I taught primary, um, and I'm currently a civil servant at the Department of Education. Amazing. I'd love it, Tom, if you could kick off. I know you've kind of touched on some bits there, but if you could give us an overview of your career journey. So from when you were on the program and like what you've gone on to do since. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I guess what's helpful is for me to I can cover as like what maybe get onto the program in the first place. Um, so I mean, background, uh, originally from East Lancashire, uh, so from a small town near Burnley. Um, so uh, not not a Burnley supporter, but, you know, probably a glory supporter for Burnley. Burnley. Um, and you came from quite a normal family. Mum was a teaching assistant. Um, now my parents went to university, um, good school. Um, but I guess even at that point, I, I had friends who, I guess, whilst I didn't see coming from Burnley is a, a disadvantage perhaps a barrier to going to university and further my career. I already knew friends that, that did and who are who were aware of that. Um, you know, my, my school encouraged me to go to uni, which I did. So to Newcastle Uni, where I studied law. Um, absolutely loved the university and kind of the, the people that I met and the networks I built. Um, Realised that law perhaps wasn't the career for me. Um, you know, just you go to uni, you do work experience, you realise actually perhaps it's not what you want to do for the rest of your career. Um, I guess that's what uni is for. Um, and what I ended up doing at uni though, uh, my second year was um, going into local secondary schools in Newcastle and doing careers workshops. Um, and these were aimed at um, secondary schools with quite a lot of premium children. Um, and I guess that did hit home to me at that point. Um, kind of the, the, the disadvantage in certain parts of the country. Um, and in particular for me, you know, going out to schools in Newcastle, which are literally five miles away from the uni, it felt like, you know, we, the, the schools were geographically close to the university, but for those pupils, the idea of going to university itself was a million miles away. Um, and in a way, it was almost a bit cringe, but that was the light bulb moment for maybe I'd like to be a teacher. Uh, that then led me to kind of looking at the different routes into teaching. Um, teach first stood out to me by a mile. Um, just because there's such a strong vision, there's such a strong mission association with the training route. Um, and in particular for me as well, um, you know, I've always been surrounded by quite strong communities. And I knew that, you know, I'd, I'd heard from other people teaching, teach training was tough. Um, I knew I'd want that network around me. And that's what I guess tempted me to apply for Teach First. Um, so I applied for the training program in, goodness me, it would have been 2016. Um, and um, I applied in second year. Uh, the reason why I applied in second year was, in all honesty, I thought, if I apply in second year and don't get on, I'll always get another shot at applying in third year. Um, but got on in second year. Um, I can still remember the lesson that I taught at the uh, development centre. Um, it was a the year two lesson all about money in a piggy bank. And um, I remember at the time thinking it's the scariest thing I've done so far. Um, you know, how, how little I knew then. Um, and then... Yeah, got onto the programme, loved some Room Institute, uh, and I was teaching, well, I was allocated at Yorkshire and Humber, um, and allocated Bradford. Um, and Bradford uh, was, uh, I must admit, before I got, um, before I started teaching there, a little bit apprehensive because I'd, I'd never been to Bradford before, didn't know what to expect. Um, but I can genuinely say that, you know, as a, a trainee teacher in Bradford, it was full of opportunities. Um, and you know, there's such a strong kind of brand, there's such a strong teach virtual community already there. It was so easy to to fit in. Um, and you know, even though in my first few months of teaching, I found it you know, really challenging. Um, you'll know, you're my development lead. Uh, actually, having that you know, like teach first community there and a strong school community actually let me fly. Um, and yeah, I was I've taught three and a half years, loved it. Um, but after, I guess it was during the pandemic when like, all of us get that chance to think about, but we all had the chance to think, oh, we, you know, what would we have to do next? Um, and for me, you know, teaching in Bradford, I'd seen so many great 
teachers and so many great ideas happening in the local area. Um, and I kind of wanted to see how those can be shared nationally. Um, or, and also, I guess, through the frustration thinking, through these great ideas, why are they not being picked up, you know, beyond my local region? Um, which then led me to apply for the civil service. Um, civil service appealed to me because um, it was, again, a big organisation um, and it was a chance to try lots of different things. Um, and also, I knew that lots of Teach First ambassadors had gone in, had gone from the classroom to the civil service, um, just because a lot of the skills you develop as a teacher are great, you know, in in working with, you know, working in government. Uh, you know, 100%, if you can handle kind of like, you know, 30 children, you know, with 30 individuals, you know, 30 different mindsets and personalities, you can definitely handle room for stakeholders. Um, and I joined, um, I... Uh, to join the civil service in 2021 january um where i originally worked for defra um, and i worked on um, eu exit policy um which was it was exciting it's high profile um i i knew it probably wouldn't be me forever uh because i knew that i'd actually want to go back to working on i guess more people focused and more um i guess that social focused policy um so I was at DEFRA for about a year, then moved on to the cabinet office where I worked uh, in the government equalities office, uh, where I was the LGBT plus uh, domestic policy lead, which I absolutely loved. Uh, and that was great because um, up until that time, I've been heavily involved in the Teach First LGBT plus network. Uh, and I, I, was I, chair? I chaired it, but I can't quite remember if I was chair at that time, but I def had chaired the network. There's been a lot of networks in my time at Teach First. Um, but I knew that you know, I'd seen what it kind of, you know, as an LGBT plus teacher myself, I'd seen the issues that, um, you know, that kind of not just pupils, but also kind of like teachers perhaps face. Um, and I want to be in that position in government to maybe do to experience to do something about it. Um, and then Love that. And then very recently, so towards the end of last year, uh, I guess the draw to work with uh, schools again became overwhelming. Uh, and I joined the Department of Education, uh, which is where I am now. Um, and I'm the school stakeholder lead uh, in the school engagement division, um, which uh, I guess my bread and butter is engaging with head teachers and teachers to make sure that, you know, the issues which they're facing on the ground are then being picked up nationally and something's done about it. And that's that, I think. Amazing. Thanks, Tom. And that's like ticked off the next three questions that I had uh, on why disadvantage. Um, I'm sure I can talk more. Yeah, well, I'd love to like unpick a bit more of like moving on to the civil service. So, like what what career opportunities have you kind of gained from taking that route? Like you touched on a couple there, I think, and like quite a rapid move through a few different roles, which all sound amazing. And like, as you said, it was, it was great to see you fly in teaching and it's really great to see you flying in the civil service as well. Um, so I'd love like, is there any like key things that stand out from the work you've done? Yeah. Um, so I guess a lot, I mean, what I would say about the civil service is it is very fast paced, um, but there are so many opportunities and being a, a Teach First ambassador, you you know that there's always going to be another ambassador nearby, um, uh, which is it's been great. And in all the departments I've worked in so far, I have you know either on purpose or inadvertently you know bumped into other ambassadors. Um, I mean, I guess career opportunities. Um, you know, for me, I've had the opportunity to do some comments to work on COP26 in Glasgow, um, where I supported the uh, Vietnam delegation, uh, which was again at the time it was. Quite a the idea of I've, I've never done anything about international engagement wise um but the opportunity to do that was amazing and i think also doing teach first in some institute where you know it's known you are thrown into the deep end you know a little bit at the start um and the support mechanism there but you, you know when you start to teach first program it's going to be a challenge of 30 months and i think actually the kind of the uh Obviously, let's just have a go. Let's just have a go and do it, which is kind of you know bred into you when you do the teach first program. It's been really helpful in the civil service. And when I was doing COP twenty six, and I knew that there were bits where I was definitely faking it until I made it. Um, you know, that's what I developed through doing teach first. Um, also supported the G seven. Um, so um, 
the G7 um, Foreign Development Ministers Conference took place in Liverpool a couple of years ago, and I had a chance to uh, go there and support the Japanese delegation, which was, you know, fantastic. Um, and again, it was you know, not just a great way for you know, me to develop my skills, um, but also, you know, from a, a network perspective, you're meeting, you know, civil servants, uh, I guess, from across government, but also from across governments in other countries too. Um, and, you know, I guess those kind of like really important soft skills have been just another opportunity I've got in civil service. Sounds amazing. And you've mentioned networks, community quite a bit. So I'd love it. Like, could you dig into that a bit more? So like, as you said, you've done a lot with networks through the time at Teach First and actually beyond Teach First as well. Like, mm. watch you proudly on LinkedIn, like sharing all of the <laughs> stuff you're doing. Um, but in terms of like the Teach First networks, like, I'd love it if you could share some examples of how you think um, A, being in networks, like benefit you, but also like how how does that like continue your mission focused um making an impact on a fair education for all yeah of course um uh yeah well i, th I think we are competing on linkedin uh, updates tim so uh you know, that's the competition to be had uh i think for me on the network side it's kind of being if you're in a network you're aligned around a core purpose or a core goal and uh i guess what ties all the networks together you know, is the teach first mission um which I think if you do a Teach First program, that mission is instilled in you then whatever you do next. Um, but also, you know, for me, the networks, it is about the range of people you get to meet. Um, so you know, I've mentioned the LGBT plus network and you know, that was, I, I remember me being a, a teacher in, in a classroom where I wasn't sure how open I wanted to be, uh, you know, being a, an LGBT plus teacher. Um, I think sometimes there's that pressure of, oh, I have to be you know, out in the classroom because I have to be this, this role model and I have to be uh, you know, someone who the children can look up to. Um, but also while that's happening, you are a trainee teacher, you're trying to balance all the responsibilities you have uh, of being a teacher. Um, and then you think about this extra thing of, do I need to be you know, this, this super role model for you know, LGBT plus people too? Um, and actually through that network, you got to kind of hear about uh, what people are doing in their schools um, and you know yes some people choose to be um, you know out in the classroom and and that's great uh, some people choose other ways to do it so some people have school pride some people have that they make their resources uh, kind of LGBT plus friendly um, you know that they, they are there's lots of ways to do it and I guess that was something I wouldn't have learned about doing that network uh, I mean more more recently so I became chair of the Teach First Civil Service Network. Um, so you know we're a group of uh, about 250 or so uh, civil servant um, uh, Teach First ambassadors. Um, and again, we work in a range of departments, but the thing that brings us all together is that you know, whilst we are working government, we still want to you know, kind of uh, deliver on that fair education for all. Um, and you know, one of the things that you know, we've really pushed for these past few months is you know we we know that we are kind of small in numbers and government is big and government is quite slow so it's what impact what's the greatest impact we can have with that you know small number of people um so like one of the things that we do is uh we provide support to all the school outreach team in the civil service so you know, the civil service you know goes out to you know different schools to share you know what being a civil service is like try and demystify uh working in government um, but, you know, one of the things which was picked up was a lot of the time these civil servants delivering these sessions were you know, the last time that they were in the classroom was when they were pupils themselves. Um, so, you know, we as a network uh, now kind of like quality assured those resources, provide support to some of those civil servants going out and doing the outreach to make sure they feel prepared and comfortable. Um, and it's making sure that, you know, we are you know, showing that the civil service kind of like welcome, you know, we, you know we, we welcome people from across the country. Um, you know, um, but one thing which was made clear to me, you know, doing Teach First is the idea that, um, you know, talent is everywhere across the country, um, but opportunity, you know, talent is evenly spread, uh, talent, talent is evenly spread, but opportunity isn't, um, and I guess working in government and with Teach First Network, it makes you want to make sure that opportunity is spread more equally. Amazing, and thank you for all the work you are doing in the networks, like, 
it is amazing how much kind of time you volunteer to do that. And I guess that leads on to the next question. And I think it's shone through already, but like, what does being part of the ambassador community mean to you? Because like, you do so much for networks, which obviously is sections of that, but like, how is being part of this group of 16,000 people? Um, and what does that mean to you? And like, have you had any like personal benefits or like, do you think you've supported any other people other than through the networks in that? Yeah, um, I guess it, it comes back to kind of what I said before in that because there are so many ambassadors now in so many you know different professions across society, um, it feels like you know, if you want to get something done, the door is already half open for you, which, which is really nice. Uh, and I mean, talking in the civil service, I know that if I wanted to quickly build a relationship with someone and I've learned that they're an ambassador, uh, often through LinkedIn, uh, uh, it's actually a great way to spark up that conversation. You know, we've got that mutual kind of touch point. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a similar institute story and then chances are we'll get talking and we'll realize that we've got a mutual friend somehow through Teach First. Uh, and, you know, again, you build that kind of that relationship. You know, it's you, you have a personal relationship, you have a working relationship. And it then also means that you get things done quicker. Um, I mean, also, again, beyond kind of like Teach First, so I've been involved with the Sutton Trust. Um, so uh, in the Sutton Trust, is a, a great social mobility charity. Um, I did one of their summer schools when I was in year 12, so back in 2013. Um, and uh, again, through me kind of like developing my kind of like Teach First network skills, that's also enabled me to kind of like continue supporting the certain trust as well. Um, and I, I mean, I now sit as a co-chair on the alumni leadership board. And one of the great things about that is, um, you know, I'm in a way I'm almost seeing the certain trust by kind of, you know, um, collecting the, almost like they're collecting the policy and they're kind of seeing the issues on the ground uh, on one side of things. And on the other side, on the teach first side, I'm actually seeing the teachers going into the classroom and actually, you know, trying to fix those problems. Uh, but then also are there no ambassadors who are working in policy, who are then trying to solve it at a national level. And I'm kind of seeing how that's all all working together. Um, and I think that if I wasn't involved in the networks, I possibly wouldn't see those links and, and it wouldn't be as effective. You are the bridge, Tom. You are the bridge. Don't, don't say that. Everyone. <laughs> um, so we're coming towards the end. So we're, we're marking 20 years since the first cohort began in the classrooms of Teach First. And obviously we've got the um, great ambassador gathering coming up on the 1st of July, which I know you're coming to, Tom, and we'll talk about that in a second. But like, what does 20 years of Teach First mean to you? Good question. Uh, so also it's exciting and it's great that 20 years, that Teach First have reached its 20 year point uh, because it shows that there's been, you know, there's uh, there's momentum behind behind the movement and behind the charity, and whether it's you know political or business or you know other organisations who want to see Teach First succeed in its mission. And you know, let's face it, it shows that people care um, about uh, you know building up for education for all. Um, you could argue it's a bit depressing because you know obviously 20 years have happened. Uh, you know, since the first cohort in 2003 in London, um, you know, education inequality um, still exists. Uh, and it's since COVID, it's now more entrenched in parts of society than ever. Um, but to put a, I guess, you know, I'll try to be positive, to put a positive spin on it, we now have that 20 years of experience and understanding of, you know, of, I guess, the root causes of that inequality. Um, and also now, I think Teach First, you know, now has the, the workforce and I guess the, the connection across society to hopefully, you know, kind of like solve you know, the entrenched issues. Um, you know, I, I think back to, you know, 2003, um, you know, the, also the big focus was kind of like, you know, inner city schools and the challenges that, that those face um, and trying to get teachers to work in the city schools and race standards. Um, you know, since then, we've actually realised it's rural and coastal schools um, who are now also facing challenges. Um, and, you know, I guess yeah, the issue with education equality is that it moves quickly um, and Teach First just needs to move quicker. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, wherever Teach First goes next, we'll make sure that we are ahead of the game uh, at topping it. 
Great, thanks, Tom. And then like I mentioned the gathering a second ago. So I know that you'll be there kind of representing yourself, but also the civil service network. So I wondered if there was any like calls to action to other ambassadors you want to kind of give a shout out to now. Of course. Um, so yes, uh, so I've signed up for the Great Ambassador Gathering in July. Uh, very excited. Uh, hoping that anyone who's actually watching this video uh, has signed up too. And if not, please do. Uh, and do come say hello. Uh, so, you know, I, I will be there uh, as part of the uh, civil service uh, Teach First Network uh, in one of my hats, um, but also more than happy to talk about some of the um, LGBT plus uh, work I've been involved in and, and the network, uh, you know, what it's like, uh, you know, being an ambassador in Yorkshire, uh, very proud of that. Um, and just, you know, generally for a capture, uh, you know, lo love a chat, Tim, as you're aware. Uh, and uh, yeah, just, just hoping to meet lots of people um, in July. That's great, Tom. Thank you so much. So Tom Seddon, 27 Ambassador, all the thanks and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Tim.